The case entitled Cameras Watching Students describes the decision that many schools took in the wake of the Columbine and Sandy Hook school shootings to implement security measures such as metal detectors, hired security guards, and security cameras. One school in particular, however, went a step farther and decided to include these cameras not just in the hallways, but in every classroom in the building. The effect is that everything students do during the day will be recorded, even things that have nothing to do with the threat of school shootings themselves, such as cheating or passing notes. This case poses a number of difficult ethical questions, and in this video I will describe a few of those. One dilemma this case poses is the conflict between authenticity and performance. The case study mentions that since installing the security cameras, student behavior has improved and test scores have gone up. Now, undoubtedly, those are great results, but we need to ask the following question. Is this an authentic improvement? Has someone's moral character really improved if it is just the result of intense surveillance? And does authenticity matter as long as we get the right results? Another related conflict exists here between privacy and security. On the one hand, we think it is important that people have some level of personal privacy and autonomy, some personal sphere upon which other people are not allowed to infringe. In fact, this can be seen as a defining feature of treating a person with respect. Do we really respect someone as an autonomous decision maker if we think that their every move needs to be monitored? But at the same time, we do also value safety and security. It is important to let people make their own decisions, but at what cost? Doesn't personal autonomy need to be infringed when lives are at stake? As you think about these questions, one recommendation I would make is to not get stuck in the trap of thinking that a dilemma like this must be an all-or-nothing matter. We do not necessarily need to choose either privacy or security. In fact, we can and ultimately we must try to find a balance between both. One thing which was always true, but which the recent pandemic made clear to everyone, is that the very act of leaving your house can constitute a potential threat to your own safety or that of others. We are all potential carriers and transmitters of diseases, or even potentially absent-minded drivers. The threats we pose to the safety of others must be taken seriously and treated responsibly. But at the same time, safety is not the only thing we value. It is not feasible that we will totally stop interacting with each other or decide to never leave our homes again. What is called for, then, is an approach which seeks to balance these competing but equally important values on a nuanced case-by-case -case basis.